a desert planet with twin suns. Why do I sense we've picked up another pathetic life form? Use my knowledge. Much to learn, you still Welcome back to Twin Sun Talks, folks. I'm your host, Jonah Liu. Thank you so much for listening. Today, we are going to be diving into the Night Sisters and a little more specifically, uh, Saj Ventress. Uh, I'm going to have a brief profile about her in the upcoming segment. Uh, so, without further ado, let's dive straight into ARC Trooper training. Gentlemen, who wants to be an ARC Trooper? I do, sir. So much like the other uh, episodes that I've done over different factions and introspectives into each of them individually, I ask, uh, start by asking the question, in this case, who are the Night Sisters? And this is a direct definition from uh, one of my favorite source books called Star Wars Absolutely Everything You Need to Know, Updated and Expanded. And I think I used this as a more a few episodes back. Um, but... The definition that it gives is that the Night Sisters are a mysterious sect of warrior witches who tap into ancient force magics to help them deceive their enemies. Uh, we're first introduced to the Night Sisters uh, in canon in the Clone Wars season three episode uh, twelve, appropriately named Night Sisters. And now I'm about to dive into kind of both it's kind of a combined history of the Night Sisters that we know in canon, plus a brief profile of Asajj Ventress. So this is, this is going to have uh, spoilers for both the Clone Wars and Dark Disciples, so if you haven't finished watching those, I would suggest that uh, if you don't want any spoilers, that you would uh, avert your ears, finish either of those things, and then come back and listen to them uh, once you're done. If you don't mind, then I'm about to get into it. So like I said, this is a brief profile of Asajj Ventress uh, and also the history of the Night Sisters as we know it during the Clone Wars era. Um, so Asajj Ventress, uh, she's the one with the bald head uh, who's one of Dooku's assassins, which I'll go into a bit in a second. But um, she was given away as an infant to protect her coven. Um, and she was found by Jedi Kai Narek after her master who had purchased her or obtained her from the Night Sisters had been killed. Kyneric is a Jedi, and he trained her as his Padawan away from the temple on a planet called Ratatak. And after Kyneric's death, Ventress tapped into the dark side to avenge him. And she eventually was apprenticed to Count Dooku, and she became one of his most dangerous and trusted assassins. And an important distinction here is that she wasn't trained as a true Sith. She was only trained as an assassin, much like Plagueis believed Maul was uh, before the events of the Phantom Menace. But in Maul's case, he was actually trained to be a Sith and therefore a successor um, and um, ultimately would take up the rank of apprentice amidst the rule of two. But since Dooku and Sidious existed at the same time, Ventress's... Um, Existence wasn't a contradiction of the rule of two um, because she was technically only an assassin rather than an actual Sith Lord herself, more of an acolyte than an actual um, member of the Sith. Whenever Ventress's powers became too great, Sidious ordered Dooku to eliminate her. Ventress survived this uh, attempted assassination attempt and returned to her home planet of Dathomir, and then with the help of Mother Talzin, who was the leader of the Night Sister Coven that she was a part of, and her sister, she attempted multiple assassination attempts against Dooku, including one involving a corrupted knight brother named Savage Opress, who's one of my favorite new characters from the Clone Wars. I think that he's really, really awesome. Um, Dooku struck back against the Night Sisters by sending General Grievous to exterminate them, a task which was, for the most part, quite successful. Um, there were a few survivors, but I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, after... Uh, her failed assassination attempts and the deaths of most of her sisters, uh, Ventress became a bounty hunter. We got to see her work with the likes of Boba Fett and his bounty hunting group, uh, along with um, uh, a few other individuals, uh, such as Ahsoka Tano, after she, um, Ahsoka was framed uh, for treason against the Republic. Ventress actually comes in and helps her. Um and we see that she is still acting as a bounty hunter. 
Eventually, Ventress allies herself with Quinlan Voss, who is one of my favorite Jedi, and I hope that we get to see a little bit more of him. But during the events of the book, like I mentioned earlier, Dark Disciple, uh, he and Ventress were um, tasked by the Jedi Council with uh, assassinating Count Dooku and essentially performing a covert operation uh, to do so. And ultimately, Ventress gave her life to save Quinlan Voss after turning him back from the dark side. She was struck with such a powerful barrage of force lightning from Dooku uh, that it killed her. And that's how Ventress dies in canon. Um, and Dark Disciple, like I've said in the past, was actually based off of unfinished um, Clone Wars episodes that they had the scripts for and everything. They had the story done, but... Um, before they, they could actually make the episodes themselves, Disney acquired um, Star Wars and canceled the show. So they were just sitting on these unfinished scripts, and that was one of the ways that they adapted that into the existing canon. Uh, kind of like the um, Son of Dathomir comic series, which I'm going to touch on just a little bit here in my other notable moments in Nice Sister history, which is when one of the times was when Mother Talzin actually kidnaps uh, the Queen of Bardada um, named Queen Julia, in order to steal her force essence, and she is thwarted by both Mace Windu and Jar Jar Binks. That is in season six of the Clone Wars and the disappeared part one and two. And then Mother Talzin was slain by General Grievous after possessing Count Dooku while working with Darth Maul uh, in the events of the Son of Dathomir comics, which were once again unfinished episodes of the Clone Wars that they adapted from the, the show scripts um, to comics. And uh, this took place between his takeover of Mandalore in Season 5 of the Clone Wars and then the Siege of Mandalore in Order 66 in Season 7. Um, and then also, I don't know too much about this, but if you want to learn a little bit more, well, they, they kind of did a very brief non-spoiler review of it, but Marin meets Cal Kestis after the events of Order 66. This is from the video game Jedi Fallen Order, and whenever I had... John Grimes and Hamza Al-Asadi on for my first episode of The Ability to Speak Does Not Make You Intelligent. Um, they talked a little bit about that because I, I'm not a huge video game guy and I haven't ever played it, but I've heard that the story is super, super interesting and it's all canon. So Marin was actually um, a survivor of the Grievous Massacre, but I'll go into that a little bit more during my notable uh, members segment. Um... So the Night Sisters, like I've said, were native to Dathomir. They are the species of Dathomir Zabrax, which if you want to learn a little bit more, you can go back to my first volume of prominent species in Star Wars that you should know. Um, and they utilize a unique connection to the Force uh, to create illusions and enchantments. And some of the powers that we've witnessed them uh, wield include the restoration of Ventress's memories after she returns after the failed uh, assassination attempt by Dooku, uh, the augmentation and enhancement of Savage Press in order to make him more powerful and more impressive, uh, a spell that renders Ventress and her sisters invisible to Count Dooku whenever they made their first assassination attempt against him, a spell that uses a lock of Dooku's hair to create a sort of like voodoo doll, which uh, they use to torture him from afar, which is super creepy, and this was in the episode whenever Grievous came and uh, wiped out the entire coven. They were able to resurrect fallen Night Sisters as zombies, which is super, super creepy, but also super cool. They create uh, new legs from battle droid parts for Darth Maul. Mother Talzin specifically does that. They are able to possess individuals like Dooku, Kanan, and Sabine. We see that a little bit whenever they return to Dathomir and Rebels. And then they're able to forge weapons that hold up against lightsaber attacks, uh, like we see in the arc wherever, um, the disappeared arc, where Mace Windu is hunting down the Queen of Bardada. And um, I'm sure that I missed a few of those in there. If y'all notice any specific abilities or feats that I didn't include here, go ahead and email me at twi uh, twinsontalks at gmail.com or DM me on Instagram or anything like that. Comment under this if this is the YouTube uh, video. Uh, and I'll make the corrections uh, in a later episode in incoming transmissions. But um, that's about all I have. They uh, adhered to a matriarchal society. They ruled over the males of their species that were known as Night Brothers. Uh, we learned that in the first arc uh, that we find them. And then 
as stated above, and I just kind of wanted to drive this home, they have the ability to raise an army of the dead to, in order to use to overwhelm their enemies, which is super, it was super creepy, but also really, really interesting because we don't get to see too much like that in uh, Star Wars other than with like the Gene Ocean brain invaders uh, type stuff where the queen is still able to control uh, her fallen soldiers even after they're dead. Um, alrighty, some notable members. Obviously, Asajj Ventress, I've been talking about her pretty much all episodes. She was Dooku's assassin, turned bounty hunter, turned redeem individual. Um, and she's one of the most complex and interesting characters in all of the Clone Wars, in my opinion. I think that George Lucas and Dave Filoni did a great job adding a lot of nuance to her character and a lot of, um, just, she's a very well-balanced character, and you can see the conflict within her, because she's not inherently evil, but she just has had such a tragic story that she, that's kind of the only road, the only option that she was given was to turn to the dark side and to be a servant of Dooku, and you see by the end of her journey that that's not what she wanted to do, and she is so deeply scarred and traumatized by all that that she becomes an extremely sympathetic character um next up we have mother talzin who is the leader of the coven uh, that ventress is from she's super super powerful and super creepy um the, when she talks there's like kind of like almost an echo to it she has this weird like wavy robe she's extremely powerful she's able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with mace windu um and she kind of single-handedly uh, brings Maul back into the galactic arena uh, by sending Savage on that mission to find him and then uh, restoring his mind and restoring uh, his legs. Uh, and then later in the Son of Dathomir comics, kind of guiding him as he attempts to uh, gain a foothold as a crime lord, uh, ultimately falling to General Grievous. And then uh, Marin, like I said, I don't know too much about her, but she is pretty prominent in Jedi Fallen Order from what I can tell. And she was a survivor of the assault on the Night Sister Coven by General Grievous. And she uh, was only a child, but she ended up uh, rising to prominence, becoming very powerful and ruling over the Knight Brothers on that planet um, whenever Cal Kestis came and found her. And then these aren't technically Night Sisters, but they're prominent Knight Brothers who are the... Um, male counterparts to the Night Sisters, uh, one of which is Savage Opress. I haven't gotten to talk too much about him, but he was the um, successor to Ventress in Dooku's hierarchy of um, uh, assassins, which obviously we know he turned out to be uh, a trap that Ventress had kind of planted in there to uh, help her kill Dooku, which didn't work. He ends up going out and finding Darth Maul on uh, Lotho Minor, Lotho Minor. Uh, the junkyard planet and he brings maul back talzin restores him and then they end up creating a sort of uh criminal syndicate uh together and uh savage unfortunately ultimately dies at the hands of darth sidious but i think that he's a super interesting character and um i think that they portrayed him super super well uh in the clone wars and i think clancy brown's awesome i think that he plays the character perfectly Last of which is Darth Maul, who is uh, Savage Opressus's brother. Obviously, he's the super cool uh, Sith that we see fighting in The Phantom Menace. Uh, if you don't know already, he is still alive after he gets cut in half by Obi-Wan Kenobi. And he is um, just one of the coolest characters, in my opinion. And I think that the way that they brought him back in... Um, Clone Wars just adds so much depth to his character, and he's no longer just this super cool, um, cool looking, and uh, cool looking character and awesome fighter. He also has motivations and goals and an agenda. He's a lot more developed, and I think that they do him so much justice. And I think that Sam Witwer plays him brilliantly. And um, yeah, I'm really glad that they decided to uh, keep him alive. And I, I, I plan on doing an entire introspective or profile into either just generally prequel era Sith or like individually doing them. And I think that it probably will be the latter, um, but time will tell. Um, that's about all that I have for this episode. Uh, and I, if there's anything that you want me to go into a little more depth about, like specific 
instances in the uh, Night Sister history. Leave a comment down below. Email me. Like I said, it's twinsuntalks at gmail.com. Um, DM me on Instagram at twinsuntalks. I'm happy to go more in depth, but that's about all that I have for this initial kind of uh, briefing on what I feel like are the most important things to know. Um, but this wouldn't be a proper episode if I didn't leave you with just a little bit more. Four! So once again, this is from the source book, uh, Star Wars, absolutely everything you need to know, updated and expanded. Uh, this is a quote for quote, word for word quote. Uh, and that is that the name Asajj was inspired by the character Asaji in the 1957 samurai film Throne of Blood by Akiri uh, Kurosawa. And George Lucas actually drew a lot of inspiration from Kurosawa films, and we got to see a lot of that kind of play out a little more uh, explicitly in the uh, Star Wars anime anime series Visions that came out uh, in September. And uh, I just think that that's a cool little tidbit, and I think that it's awesome that we've gotten to see uh, a lot more of the Kurosawa influence that uh, is very prominent in Star Wars, uh, especially through Visions. But anyways, that's all that I have. Uh, I appreciate y'all listening. I hope that y'all enjoyed this. This has been a very um, heavily demanded episode. People are very interested in the Night Sisters, so I hope I did them justice. Uh, yeah, until next time, you've taken your first steps into a large world. May the Force be with you, and I will see y'all in the next episode. Bye, friends.